why we would expect an Alexandrian bishop to be corrupt. Born about AD 191, so there's an early bishop, says in his Stromata that he cannot explain the mysteries because he should thereby, according to the old proverb, put a sword in the hands of a child. So now what have you been called so far? Profane? A child? Uninitiated? Ignorant? Well, yes, Cyril, Bishop of Jerusalem, was born in the year 315, died 386. This also comes from Morals and Dogma. In his catechesis, he says, The Lord spoke in parables to his hearers in general, but to his disciples he explained in private the parables and allegories which he spoke in public. The splendor of glory is for those who are early enlightened. So only those get the enlightenment. Obscurity and darkness are the portion of the unbelievers and the ignorant. Wow. Just so the church discovers its mysteries to those who have advanced beyond the class of catechumens. Here's another word for you, catechumens. I'm so proud I belong to the catechumens. We employ obscure terms with others. So, the dumb ones. Don't get the truth. Only the initiated get the truth. Well, what does Matthew say about parables? 13 verse 35. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So the parables are to reveal, not to obscure. And they say the parables are to obscure and not to reveal. Now, here's a famous uh, bishop, St. Augustine. As you all know, St. Augustine is the founding father, if you like, of Catholicism, who was born 347, died 430, says in one of his dis discourses, having dismissed the catechumens, hence, ye catechumens, go away, we have retained you only to be our hearers. How nice. Thank you for that privilege. Because besides those things which belong to all Christians in common, we are now to discourse to you of sublime mysteries, which none are qualified to hear, but those who by the Master's favor are made partakers of them. So Jesus will choose some for his favor, and the rest are catechumens. Go away. We'll just tell you what you think you should hear. To have taught them openly would have been to betray them. How nice. Isn't this deceptive? This is disgusting. St. Christostom and St. Augustine speaks of initiation more than 50 times. St. Ambrose wrote, writes to those who are initiated, and initiation was not merely baptism or admission into the church, but it referred to initiation into the mysteries. Morals and Dogma, page 4546. That's from the horse's mouth. You cannot get a better source than that. Then what does he say about Christ the Storm, Bishop of Constantinople? That's the other place where the corrupt uh, versions originated. He was born 354, died 417. He says, I wish to speak openly, but I dare not on account of those who are not initiated. Oh, brother, here's another one. So was the early church full of corrupt bishops already, yes or no? Absolutely. I shall therefore avail myself of disguising terms, discoursing in a shadowy manner. Where the holy mysteries are celebrated, we drive away all uninitiated persons and then close the doors. These people do things in darkness. He mentions the acclamation of the initiated, which he says, I hear pass over in silence, for it is forbidden to th disclose such things to the profane. Your catechumens, your profane, your uninitiated, what are we still? Well, Karl Marx calls us cattle. Human herds. St. Cyril of Ag Alexandria, I like the way they always are saints. Saints of who? Who made bishop in 412 and died in 444, says in the seventh book against Julian, these mysteries are so profound and so exalted that they can be comprehended by those only who are enlightened. 
Aren't we fortunate that there are some enlightened ones on the world who know what's going on? The rest of us can just stay stupid. Well, what does the Bible say about these secret initiations? Isaiah 45, verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Wow, that sounds nice. I like that. Isaiah 48, 16. Come ye, ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there I am, and now the Lord God and his Spirit has sent me. No secrets with God. Amos 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secret unto the servants, the prophets. Mark 4, verse 22, let's go to the New Testament. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. Luke 8, verse 17, for nothing is secret. There shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Luke eleven thirty three. no man, when he hath lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel but on a candlestick that they which come in may see the light. John 7 verse 4, For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Which doctrine do you prefer? Those of the enlightened, enlightened initiated ones or those of the Bible? Which God would you prefer to serve? The God of the initiated ones or the God of the Bible? I like this one. I like Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what Jesus said. John 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him and him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret... I have said nothing. Which God do you prefer? I prefer this one. I hate the secrecy, this clandestine religion, this I know more than you story. Isn't it disgusting? I know the path and I don't care if you don't make it, you're just a catechumen. Well, let's have a look how they changed it, these initiated ones, to keep the truth away from the rest of the world. Which verses did they change? We know they changed them. Let's just have a few easy ones, and then we'll get deeper and deeper into the doctrine. Remember a few things. Remember that Hort said, we will change it very slightly. Here a word, there a word, and nobody will even notice. And finally, when we have it all together, when we have all the little changes in one big package, if you read it all together, our doctrine, and not theirs, will be there. Isn't that what he said? That's exactly what he said. So, NIV, 2 Samuel 21, 19. In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, Elihim, son of Yarekum, the Bethlehem, the might, killed Goliath, the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. Oops, who killed him? Elan, son of Yare Oregim, King James. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines where Elanan, the son of, same one, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Who did kill Goliath? Oh, so you prefer the King James Version over the other one, over the NIV? 2 Samuel 23, verse 5, NIV. Is not my house right with God, King James Version, although my house be not so with God? So they turn everything around. When God says it's not right, the NIV says it is right. Another one, Hosea eleven twelve, And Judah is unruly against God, even against the faithful Holy One. King James, but Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with the saints. You see, God had said, Ephraim has left me, Israel has left me, but Judah is still with me. 
Satan doesn't like that, so he says, no, all of them were against me. So he changed that too. There's a little change. It's, you know, it's minor, 